I am pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Know anything useful about Tartarus? Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident deaths, including but not limited to executions, are as follows. 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows. Zero. The interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. I would also ask that you leave your Captain's ID with me, in the event that you do not return. You promise not to leave without me? I can make the assurance that I will not leave with another captain unless you do not return within 876,541,652 hours. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. What? What the hell is with you people and landing violations? I'm sorry, you people? Yeah. Did you just cast a generalization on upstanding UDL employees? That's a fine of 200 bits. Well, You're fine! 5,708, not including the cost of your execution and the disposal of your remains, which will be assessed posthumously. Ha! Huh. So, if you're just going to kill me, why bother with a ticket? Protocol is important, ma'am. The sentencing of one crime does not preclude the sentencing of another, technically speaking. Tartarus Docking Authority signing up. Hang on. Looks like you're gonna have company at the execution. Another ship just pulled into your dock. Wait, is that from the Groundbreaker? What the? Pay no mind to that. Just have a pleasant day. Transmission terminated. How can I be of assistance? Talk to you later, Ada. Goodbye. Wow, this is so cute. So as soon as you land on Taurus, I'll make execution. Well, this is over of ladies and... Maybe I'll die in this episode, who knows? But I'm going to do what I can to save my little scientist friend, so let's head on out. So I'm right here. This is Tartarus? Hey, just like, comment, subscribe to my channel. The captain did right by us once. Now it's our turn. The board will never own groundbreakers. Not while I breathe. Oh! oh Okay. This is cute. And you know, I'm with Perverti and Nokia because those are my two favorite followers, so... You, you best believe I'm gonna have them with me on my last possible moment. What? What? Hey, you have no loot? Oh, that's kind of corny. Oh, you did. I got you. Yo, this weapon's pretty badass. I love it. Who's shooting me? Hold on. No, sorry. You're not gonna hit my co my, not my coworker, but my ship buddy. You okay? You're okay, right? You're good? Okay. Excuse me. That's right. That's right. This is awkward, honestly. Ooh. Okay, are we good now? Let me get some more heals here. This is insane. And to think, which just. Which is here just as help my scientist buddy you know what get him is he down 
Oh no, sorry. You're not gonna... What are you doing? You really think you can get me with that? Come on. I think that's... In... Is that all of them? Okay. Good, let's go. The elevator's this way. Used as a prison has for bars when it's kind of a storm like that, Garden Gates. I've gotta admit, I'm not too keen on walking into a prison. If they lock me up, I'm liable to kill everyone trying to get back out. That's a spirit. This is why I have both of you with me on what could be the last mission of our lives. Lot of shooting to do, Captain. Yeah, you're you're telling me. And speaking of shooting, do I have enough? Probably for for a little bit. Anyways, what? Nice. Let me switch my weapon here. We are really killing everyone. It's okay, though. I got my two best friends with me. Alright. Oh no, what's going on? Okay, I got another one here. Perfect. Alright, so... Yep, they've recovered, which is fine. Now let's, uh... It's up there, so let's go to the ladder over here. Okay. Nice. We should be this much closer to helping uh, capture, well not capture, but save my scientist friend. More people to kill? Really? The pit exit. Oh, this is nice. This is so nice. Um, let me see here. Yep, this is gonna be fine. I love how Parvati is just standing right behind Nokia. This is so funny. Oh, we got another one. There you go. Take that, thank you. She got her. There you go. Awesome. Let me get my health going. Thank you. Got oh. I bet these people that are in this prison are pretty surprised that they that there's someone willing to try and save the scientist because I'm not gonna let him die here. I'm sorry. That man has helped me so much. Oh shit. Alright, MSI. I'm not one for rousing speeches, but the captain needs our help. So get in there and Really? What kind of a speech is that? Oh, that guard got faded. Okay, we're almost there, right? Did she bang him so hard both of his legs gave out? Cause that is so badass right there. I support women's rights, but also support women's wrongs. Okay, let me see. Alright, right here, let's go. 
I'm sorry, but I'm not taking any chances. I'm not having anyone try and stop me, so. Ooh. I just love the little animations, honestly. I am a star. Damn, okay. I don't know what we are being affected by, but Nokia is just... You good? Alright, so it should be the pit exit. Why would we need to do the pit exit? Okay, come on. Okay, so we gotta go over here. Sealed. Unsealed door. Leave. Oh. Well, look who it is. I'll be damned. I was prepping the studio for our announcement, and here you are as a bonus. I had heard you'd taken a mechanic under your wing. What's the matter, girl? Couldn't find actual employment? Don't talk to her like that! Really right. Better than any of you bored folk ever had. I'm exactly where I want to be. That's right. Ah, uh, I knew I smelled monarch when you lot walked in. The stench of sulfur, depression, and desperate bravado is unmistakable. Keep talking, and you'll be smelling iron. Ain't nobody so important I won't put a bullet in. When you go off and get yourself shot, Try to avoid taking one to the face. I'll want it recognizable to show to my citizens. Chairman Rockwell, I presume. My word. You've correctly identified the most recognizable man in the colony. Remarkable. It's a wonder what Phineas saw in you. Then again, he's an insane person. Thankfully, he's our insane person now. A proper company man. I'll see for myself when I get to him. There you go. Done. What's done is done. There you go. Let's go. Whew, my goodness. Let's go. I just had to kill him. He was so annoying. And besides, I have a good feeling no one's gonna miss him anytime soon. Oh man, this is never ending, huh? Good, hide. Come on! There you go. Come on. Sick. You know what? I'm not even gonna bother. Let's go. Alright, we're here. Yeah, we are actually. Finally. Captain. You have an uncanny talent for complicating my life. You've disrupted the balance of power. Me? You upset the natural order of things. Me? You've introduced uncertainty. And okay. there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. Sounds like a you problem. It's over, Sophia. Stand down. I'm afraid I can't do that. Why not? I'm aware of your diplomatic talents, Captain. You have a gift for manipulation. Well, but I'm a Scorpio, I so... <laughs> I'm no easy mark. For all your talents, you are the enemy of Halcyon. And therefore, you are my enemy. And I'm here for Phineas. Let him go. Hmm. You make a nuanced and compelling argument. Here's my rebuttal. No. Dr. Wells is being held in my custody. His cooperation will prove invaluable, even if I have to beat it out of him. All that's left to do is put down this riot, arrest you, and then get on with the bloody business of saving this colony. You know what? You don't understand. Phineas is my friend. 
I'm not leaving without him. Well, that's mostly correct. You're not leaving here at all. I take no pleasure in this, you know. I simply have no other option. Leaving you alive is too great a risk. Goodbye, Captain. Do your worst, you sociopath. If you insist. This prison is equipped with an auto-mechanical warden. I've had it programmed to eliminate you on site and rinse your remains down a drain. And don't worry. I will inform Dr. Wells that you died heroically or something. That's the one? Shit. Fuck it. I'm ready. Let's go. Ram? That is so cute. There you go. As long as we get rid of this thing, we should be good. Nope. Yo! This ram is really living up to its name. Seriously, it's crazy. Board Gideon machine. I love how we're just jumping him. Seriously. What the hell? Dead. Okay, not bad. Let's go. Upstairs, right? Whew, that was a mini boss battle, if I do say so myself. I really do appreciate having my teammates right, ne right by my side. I wouldn't know what to do, it was just me against the machine alone. Wait, you actually went down so quickly? Yeah, I got you. Let's go. You don't know how glad I am to see you. Same here. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. Because you you're my old man. Out of That's why. Mind. Come I on. I can't begin to thank you enough. Are you all right? What did they do to you? I'm all right, thanks to you. Akande wanted my cooperation. I'm quite sure she would have beaten it out of me if you hadn't arrived. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Great. And I was just about to pop open some drinks and celebrate. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory. But we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. So we've got to make do on our own. Seems to me that'll make us stronger in the end anyhow. You're quite right. We've got no choice but to make do on our own. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. We have a lot of work ahead of us. We best get started. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. 
We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds. And then we're going to fix this damn colony one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? You can count on me. I'll help you revive the other colonists. When I revived you, I thought you were going to help me save this colony. I was wrong. I had our roles reversed, you see. You're the one who's going to save us all. I'm just the one who set you on your path. You're the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to lead this colony, you have my support. We're not a colony any longer, are we? Our last connection to Earth has been severed, and so we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? Hmm. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. Yes. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. That's wild. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation. That's unfortunate. But most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Sanjar's civil liberties and worker-centric policies were slow to catch on with the other corporations. But as Halcyon began its long, arduous journey toward recovery, many of Terra 2's smaller townships started adopting MSI's alternative corporate structure and eventually became entirely self-sufficient. Nice. I'm In happy. In the coming years, many of these townships managed to eke by, where otherwise they might have starved. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. Yeah, creepy, but As for Reed Thompson, good. It was said that he lasted exactly two days outside the walls of Edgewater. That's Years sad. Later, a marauder was found in possession of his hat. Awkward. Under the leadership of June Lay Tennyson. June Lay. She's cool. Against corporate influence. Yes, the queen. Mechanical stability gave June Lay the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the Groundbreaker looks promising. Good, I'm happy. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the Lifetime Employment Program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities. You know what? Screw Africa. Byzantium and its While bougie self. Who cares? The they've grown accustomed to, oh, well. The board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. Oh no, clutching my pearls. A dark time indeed. <laughs> Whatever. Even the Gorgon asteroid, though a distant enigma to most of Halcyon, felt the aftershocks of your actions. The destroyed Adrena Time synthesizer became a symbol of the board's cruelty 
and a rallying point for Wells and his scientists as they sought to build a more humane, ethical halcyon. They cleared the dead from Gorgon's laboratory and repurposed them to aid in the crucial work of solving the colony's nutrition crisis. Gorgon, which had once sown death and destruction across Halcyon, became a source of hope and renewal. The Gorgon Project's final explosive end was bittersweet for Olivia Ambrose. She wandered the colony's fringes alone, searching for others like her who despised the board and meant to destroy them. In time, she found Phineas Wells and his cadre of scientists, and she joined them in their efforts to save Halcyon. You know what? While, even though she even knew I didn't Halcyon like the way she treated her daughter, at least she was helpful that, with helping Phineas. Project. She was always haunted by the memory of her daughter, Minnie, who hadn't lived to see the better world they were building. She never did forgive herself for the horror her work had wrought on Halcyon. But she remembered fondly the daring captain who'd put an end to it at last. Really? She likes me? I'm surprised. The Gorgon asteroid remained a sobering reminder of the potential for progress and disaster in humanity's most ambitious efforts. The Rizzo's company in Halcyon dissolved after the collapse of the board. Good. Needless to say, the launch of Spectrum Brown was indefinitely delayed. A stockpile of Spectrum Brown remains buried deep beneath the ruins of the old distillery, abandoned to time and attrition. As it should. With the dissolution of the board, <gasps> Ruth, Ruth. found herself without the two constants in her life. Oh, honey. Byzantine culture and her sister, Belinda. Oh, no. In the face of this new reality, she struggled to find a direction for her life. The colony had moved on from Halcyon Helen and would require new heroes in the years to come. And so Ruth Bellamy decided it was time to exit stage left. She quietly disappeared from public view. The dissolution of the board did not mean the dissolution of the ambitions of Cedric Kincannon. Yeah, he's a little jerk, but leader of Sublight at least he helped out, so I can't really blame Cedric him. Cedric offered Slug's transportation services to the newly thawed colonists and set to work ferrying resources and food wherever they were most needed. For better or worse, Slug headgear became fashionable in the following years. As the board began to disintegrate, Spencer Woolrich found himself at a crossroads. Cling to what little stardom remained to him, or help usher Halcyon into its new future. Really, Spencer? To the surprise of many, perhaps himself most of all, Spencer chose the latter option. And now I'm shook. Having learned a variety of different skills in the many different roles played throughout his lengthy career, Spencer founded a radio serial dedicated to staying alive despite the odds. His subjects included how to survive violent encounters with only grazing wounds. Okay. Dispense pithy one-liners for tense scenarios. Okay. And of course, how to look good doing both. Must be an After interesting a brief podcast. To dating Helen as one person rather than two, which both Bertie and Helen found too strange. Bertie struck out on his own to try his hand at raising woolly cows. That's different. Many of his former Rangers teammates soon followed, accompanied by the woolly cow. The team had originally plied with alcohol. The dairy farm thrived under Bertie's leadership and care. The dairy rangers privately believed that the woolly cow softened Bertie's temper considerably. Although the only one brave enough to say this to his face was promptly headbutted. Of course. Due to the board's dissolution, Many of the Prophet's old customers no longer found quite the same value in productivity seminars that they once had. With her business drying up, the Prophet chose to take her followers 
down a new path. A new path of scamming? Months later, salvagers on Eridanos found clues leading them to a seemingly abandoned bunker out in the wilderness. Inside, they discovered horribly mangled corpses, sacrificed to a blood-scrawled portrait of a sprat-headed deity. Wow. The was not among the bodies. Of course she wasn't. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. Really? She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people. Sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> it's a start. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. Aww. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Aww, Ellie. Ellie! Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Maelstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. That's as my much man. As he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable. The vicar, known as Max, eventually decided that it was time to move on. Oh, wow. To live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with. And he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless. You know what? From a Good for him. Striving and fighting the That's my boy right there. Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. I'm happy. What's the matter with the hope? Parvati! June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker. <gasps> Did and she? Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. God, no. Stories of her adventures spread across the colony. And Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. She deserves it. served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and June Lei were never far apart. Oh my goodness. Mioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Caron Group an MSI subsidiary of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide, or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities. Across you know, I'm happy for Nokia and SAM. This I love this. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Oh, wow. Okay. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest, and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. You're welcome. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. Breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. No! His work was carried on by
by the scientists and engineers. Oh no, Phineas! Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon, but for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? What about me? Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the host's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. Damn. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. This is amazing. Thank you for being with me on this wonderful journey of playing this game. I just love how each of my crew had a after story of what happens. And I just love how each of them grew better for themselves. So um, this is Lover of Ladies. Thank you for watching the last episode of The Outer Worlds. And, again, I want to give a shout to my brother, Kenny, who passed away a year ago. Thank you for getting me this game, and I will miss you, and I would never forget you.